stuff's up everyone welcome back to another video and as you guys can see yes i did get my haircut i'm sure there's like a couple of you that are going to comment on that so let's get that out of the way yes i did get a haircut but what i want to talk to you guys today is something special i'm thinking of turning this into a series every time this happens because a lot of you guys keep asking me like loris what to do what are you using what are people using for a biz uh, how are people cleaning their biz what are the most effective teams so, well, loris what do you think of this team is it good in the current abyss many many times right i'm spending like i swear to god half of my interactions with people viewers are just answering team build questions here and there and i know some of you guys are like oh my god only people asking walrus for team building questions like <laughs> Okay, I'm not the best person, I know, but try shooting Zajef a DM and see how long it takes for him to respond. Like, you'll be three abyss cycles later by the time the man gets back to you on specific advice on what to do, if even, right? So, why not come to, like, the eighth best option? <laughs> I don't know. But, okay, jokes aside, today I want to showcase you guys something more concrete, something that's just not my opinion. Something that is irrefutable, backed up by hard data. Data from over 120,000 players, CM players, and most of which are more hardcore. So the teams that these people are using, the teams that has been handcrafted by these players and have proven to withstand the test of time. A lot of the teams that I'm about to show you guys, you likely did not see for the first time. In fact, I would argue almost all of them are pretty much meta teams. It's just the amount of usages kind of gets shifted around here and there. And you actually might be surprised at what team is number one. So before I show you guys the teams, I want you guys to go down into the comments before I show you and comment on the top three teams you think are used in this abyss. Now, I will give you guys some hints. So in terms of demographic, this is the CN demographic. And yes, while it's not like completely outside the box, like, oh my God, Amber was the most used. It's not a trick question. However, number one spot likely will surprise you just a little bit. Now, the data is pulled and the ranking is decided by the ratio of ownage rate versus usage rate. So basically, you might see like, oh, the amount of percentages this team appears is less than maybe third or fourth. But the fact that so little people actually own these characters, the percentage of usage to ownage rate jumps up and pushes it to the first place. All right, that's all the hint I'm going to give you guys. So pause the video, comment down below and continue it when you're done. Here you guys have it, the number one team with a usage rate of 38%. Now, before we go any further, I know it's Chinese, so I'm going to translate this for you guys right here this column is the usage rate this column here is the appearance rate right it says deng chang li, which means like how many times they kind of appeared onto the floor now you guys have my question what the hell is the point of this percentage versus this percentage the usage rate is a percentage based on the amount of people who owns this right the appearance rate is out of everything so out of 120,000 players, percentage-wise, they only appeared 3.9% out of the 120,000 players. But 38% because only 10% of the people who... But 38% is because out of the 10.3% of the people, over a third of them use this team, right? That's the difference between these two percentages. Don't get that confused. This is compared to the total number of people, and this is compared to the amount of people who actually own the unit. Now moving on to likely what you guys care about the most is the first half of the abyss versus the second half of the abyss. Now, is this not interesting? 0% on the first half and 100% in the second half. Yes, the number one team used for this current abyss is Ayaka Monocryo. Wow. If you tie me in a chair and swear to me you will beat me with a bat until I guess the first and most used team in the Spiral Abyss this patch, I likely wouldn't have been able to tell you until I passed out because I would have made through all my guesses and I likely would have died from blood loss at that point because I, I honestly would not have thought Ayaka Mono Carry would be sitting on top. I wonder how many of you actually commented below number one team was Ayaka Mono Carry, but it does make sense, right? So for those of you commenting right now, like, Walrus, are you telling me that you wouldn't have been able to guess Ayaka Mono Carry uh, the, with the bat thing? It's like, listen, that was a joke, all right? Of course, like, try getting whacked in the face by a bat four times. You 
like get like five guesses at most of course i would have passed the fuck out i'm telling you guys it wouldn't have been my top three guesses as the most used team that is all i'm saying i know some people like to focus in on these kind of side jokes but regardless let's focus on the team comps here it makes a lot of sense especially if you look at the usage rate for first half and second half right the biggest problem of this abyss for most people is clearing the dps check for the Wii net i would know because i spent close to an hour on my live stream on one of my viewers account that is from eu and i did try to use the ayaka mono cryo team to clear it now kokomi here a lot of people say oh it's a damage loss damage loss but kokomi running the thrilling tales catalyst could be justified in some cases now other people say why didn't you use mona well if you use mona it may have been tough getting to this point to begin with through uh the first two chambers i'm not going to say that it's not possible because always there's somebody like or else i can do a gag with my eyes closed hands tied behind my back so <laughs> so easy but honestly there's a reason why most meta players would not choose mona over kokomi it's just the ease of use honestly it's just that right so what this team relies on is the instances of burst damage that ayaka's burst skill can bring to the table the Wii Net has very short windows where you're actually able to damage it most of the time it's hiding underground so with the short amount of time that it's on field ayaka's kit fits extremely well in being able to deal incredible amounts of damage in such short bursted windows and the Wii Net thankfully doesn't move around too too much so even without it being in the phase where you can knock it down with the uh, swirl reaction you can still actually use ayaka burst on it which can take down a quarter of its health if your ayaka is well built so with all that said you know once looking at the data it doesn't surprise me too much but thinking about it from the very beginning it was difficult to imagine this was the crutch that almost everybody unanimously leaned on now if you look at the second team this is the one i keep telling you guys about is Tartaglia International is like a, essentially a vape team centered around Tartaglia's youngling, right? And then Kazua is just there because Kazua is freaking everywhere. This team, their usage ratio is 79% in the first half, 21% in the second half. Now, this makes a lot more sense. While a lot of people will say, well, can't Tartaglia kind of do what you explain for in Ayaka's case? While that is true, Tartaglia's team actually offers a lot of sustained damage. Xiangling's Pyronado lasts for an absurdly long time that is actually surprisingly more difficult to take advantage of this and plus if you really wanted to take advantage of this team's strength you need some sort of sustained dps for tartaglia to stay on field and actually abuse his melee stance so actually if you want to calculate let's say a three second burst window i would honestly say ayaka team does take the cake over the tartaglia team now of course it's much longer than three seconds but even stretch it out to five six seven seconds i still think ayaka team is going to do more but if you stretch it out to maybe 12 seconds i think the tartaglia team is starting to take over and that's my point right this team is incredibly powerful even if you want to compare burst damage it's still one of the better teams and it has two four stars in it so relatively free to play all right now the third one is probably the most free to play out of the three teams you have essentially three free to play characters don't argue with me about it i know bennett is a limited character he's like the only one left here that is not a complete free to play character amongst these three four stars Raiden Shogun is incredibly popular. We all know this. She is very consistently at the top of most people's usage rate thing. There's at least like 40% of you guys watching right now who relies on Raiden consistently through most Abyss iterations. So it's no surprise that Raiden National Team takes the third place. Moving on to number four. Hu Tao Double Hydro. Wow, this was the one that I thought would likely take a place over Ayaka. But just like I did with my viewer account i put hu tao team in the first half because hu tao team in the first half deals with those freaking cryo lava trolls so effortlessly especially you have a c1 hu tao you can fully take advantage of her entire stamina bar combined with Zhongli, you're really golden you're going to be crushing that like around 50 seconds maybe even less so you can give plenty of time to your second half team in fact the team that i used was hu tao double hydro first half and ayaka mono cryo in the second half and even though it was a free-to-play account with a free-to-play hu tao c0 free-to-play weapon right and all the swords 
everybody was C0. I was just 10 seconds off to getting the 36 stars. So I'm sure it was doable. Just I didn't have another hour <laughs> to have to sit on stream and grind it out. I do think that if the viewer took the advice with the team and played on proper ping and not 150 plus ping like I did, I'm sure that 10 seconds was easily doable. So even a pure free to play player should be able to utilize these two teams to clear the abyss. 36 stars at that. So very impressive feats. Moving on to number five. Surprise, surprise. You guys thought Al Haytham would be here, but nope, he is not. It is your friend Tai Nari. Now, the reason actually that Al Haytham's team is not up here is because this is taken based out of ownership percentage versus appearance percentage. So, to put in simple terms, it's because a lot of people skip Al Haytham. All right. Uh, if Al Haytham was a standard banner character, which he's too broken to be one, the stats would show it. But even then, you see, if you guys jump down a couple percentages from 18.8 .8 to 16.3 is when you first see Al Haytham. This just comes to show you how impactful of a character Tainari is. This is what I've kept telling you guys. If you guys already have a Tainari, there is really no need to go out of your way to pull for an Al Haytham. I said this when Al Haytham was still around and I'll keep hampering it home. Right. Tainari is an incredible character. In fact, for a standard banner character, I would argue he is currently the best in terms of value for your team. You can literally pick this character up, slap some even like throw Yai into the trash bin, put in, let's say, Fischl here. You're going to do just fine. You can take Zhongli away and throw in another shielder of some sort. You can do just fine because truth be told, for the most part, you're going to be too far away from your enemies to actually take advantage of Zhongli's shield 100% of the time. Sure, if you want to like stand in their faces and do it, you can take advantage of it. But if you're a little further away, usually that debuff is not even active when you're using Tainari. And the only one that I say is very difficult to replace is Nahida because she is the one that kind of scales up your damage to the EM buffing and the double dendro, right? All that good stuff. So all in all, I think that this is a fine team and it's incredible to see people utilizing it in the second half 97 percent using it in the second half that is incredible to see and to my surprise this team actually is going to work far better than you guys actually will give it credit for so people just because the character is a standard banner character and just because i hate them is a limited character banner it doesn't always mean standard banner characters are duke duke now is that me trying to create a segue into sliding dia into this conversation and kind of calming the nerves Nerves of those who pull Dia? Absolutely not. But you know, not all of them are built equally. Just like there's a Chi Chi back in 1.0, there's going to be a Dia in patch 3.0 era, right? We all get some wins and losses here, and then we can't all be taking fat, fat Ws. You got to leave some of us to take the Ls. But I'm sure that Dia likely will get better in some time. Not like insane, but maybe go from here to like here, right? That's possible. We can't rule that out. But yes, moving on, we have the number six place, Raiden National with a twist, Yelan instead of Xing Chu. Now, why is this team not higher, even though it likely has a higher damage threshold? Well, that's simple because not everybody has Yelan, right? I think you guys are starting to see a pattern here. We're just going to kind of speed run the rest because we're past the top five teams and people stop caring, right? So 96% in the first half, four in the second half. And then we have my favorite team. I call this team Absolute Zero. I've been using it since Kokomi came out. I, I adore this team so damn much. Of course, not a lot of people are going to be able to use this team because unfortunately, a lot of people spend a lot of resources on Ayaka and then having a Shinho to buff Ayaka is just better by just funneling more field time for Ayaka instead of sharing that with Ganyu. It's kind of awkward if you try it for yourselves, but you know, I like it, so take it at that, right? And again, the purpose of usage is exactly the same. 100% in the second half, trying to deal with the Wii Nut, right? Now, moving on to team number eight. Here's where well, I hate them comes up. Eight and nine are kind of different variances. You have Kuki Shinobu, use this one. If you have Yaimiko built, use this one. Doesn't really matter. Having Kuki means that you likely don't need a shielder. Not having Kuki means you don't have a healer, but you can bypass that with a shielder. Both of these teams were used in the second half. Personally, I think both of them are great. It really depends on what you have. Now moving to number 10, you kind of have the budget version of the first team I said. Now, does this mean this team is weaker than the first one? No, not really. Kind of, because uh, I, I, like honestly, if you switch Diona, 
for Shinhe. That's what a lot of the people down in the comments, you guys will see it like, oh, I, like I never use Kokomi. I always use uh, Mona. It's a skill issue. Well, yeah, you're right. It is a skill issue, but it's, it's a far more arduous task to ask people to use no healer, no shielder, Mona Thrilling Tails. So no prototype Amber, uh, uh Mona Thrilling Tails to freaking crush the lips. Do you really need that much? Amber? Like, are you struggling that much that you're going to forego all forms of defense and uh, rejuvenation for offense, right? Like, it just doesn't make sense to me because you're going to be retrying that abyss over and over again. The 99% of you, I'm sorry for the 1% uh, true gamers in the comment section who just got mauled. It's like, walrus, I always do it first. Get it, all right? For the 99% of you guys, this is not very feasible. So running a Diona is a smart move. Moving to number 11. Now that's the top 10. You guys could leave now if you don't care about number 11, 12. It's once again, Tainari and Alhatha, right? What can I say? Yes, Dendro is pretty much dominating the meta, but it's good to see that Cryo is somehow still able to creep a foot through the door. I mean, it's to no one's surprise that during Ayaka and Shinhe banner, they would be viable units. In fact, they would be one of the best units for clearing the abyss. But remember, this is just one iteration of the abyss. This stuff changes all the time. So be prepared for the meta to kind of shift 180 degrees. Don't overinvest where you don't need to, right? Starting from the number two team all the way, I would say to the number six team, these actually are some of the best and most consistent teams I've seen. The Aika team often hovers around four or five and sometimes even lower than that. Doesn't mean they're not relevant. It's just they're they're usually not this good. All right. With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Invest in these units if you guys just never want to struggle with the abyss ever again. And play at your own risk. Invest at your own risk. Stay safe. And until next time, peace, peace. Bye.